the Ukrainian military advanced in the Kursk region. At the same time, Russian invaders press along the line Kupiansk, Svetovo, Kremenea, within Toritsk, near Pokrovsk, and the advance of the enemy near Gulyapolum is recorded. This is reported by ISW. It is reported that on September 18, Ukrainian forces continued their assault on the Glushkov district of the Kursk region. On September 18, Russian sources, including the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation, said that the Russian army allegedly repelled the attacks of the Ukrainian army near the Mary, Medvezhai, and Novi Puty. Ukrainian troops recently expanded their bridgehead in the Kursk region. Geolocation footage from September 17 shows that the army advanced to the east of Krasno October. On September 17, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation announced that Ukrainian troops attacked southeastern Koronevo in the region of Obakovka and Lubomovka, as well as northwestern Sudza in the region of Maloy Lokny. Geolocation footage, published on September 17 and 18, show that Russian troops have recently moved eastward along two forested areas southeast of Koronevo and south of Obakovka. On September 18, the Russian soldiers said that the Russian army had advanced to the south of Durovka and along the Koronevo Sheptakovka Safanovka Highway. Also, Russian bloggers claimed on September 16 and 17 that Putin's troops advanced in the area of Algovka and Uspanovka. On September 18, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation announced that the Russian troops were conducting offensive actions to the southeast of Koronevo in the area of Nikolivo Dorino, Dorino, Lubomovka, Tolstoy Lug, and southeast of Sudza in the area of Plekovogo. Geolocation footage, published on September 18, shows that the Russian army recently carried out a mechanized assault on Ukrainian positions in the southeastern part of Koronevo. The representative of the Kharkiv Regional Military Administration, Alexey Mitrashkovsky, told AFP on September 18 that Ukrainian troops stopped the counteroffensive of the Russian Federation in the Kursk region and stabilized the situation. The problems with the Russian Federation's arms shortage, which the head of Ukrainian intelligence, Kirill Budanov, recently mentioned, really exist, and Ukraine is not passing off wishful thinking as reality. This was stated by the military political observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko on air at Kiev 24. It is enough to open Google Maps, look at the situation in Russia with warehouses, storage arsenals and storage centers across the territory and everything falls into place. There is no need to even give in to doubts. In addition, if everything was fine with the Russian Federation, with a mechanized component, equipment, first of all, then why would it be turning to the whole world, to African countries for example, the same Sudan with an offer to buy out Soviet equipment, tanks that were transferred to these countries? They are also constantly looking for equipment in Central Asia that they can buy out from those countries that can sell it. And they even turned to Latin American countries, Nicaragua for example, Venezuela, with offers to buy out something. That is, the problem is obvious, and it will be more and more in Russia every day. Kovalenko noted, he stressed that the Russians were preparing for a war for several weeks, but got a war for several years and were not ready for this. The potential they had as of 2022 is now effectively leveled. Kovalenko noted that we are now emotionally talking about the advance in Donbass in the Pokrovsk direction near Ugledar. But we must react not with emotions, but from an analytical point of view. In 2022, the Russians had rates of advance and capture of hundreds and sometimes thousands of square kilometers per day. And now we are talking about their offensive capabilities, which do not consist of several directions, that is, from the north, from the east, from the south, at the same time with thousands of kilometers. But we are talking about a section of the front, Pokrovsko direction. Kurakovskoy and the Ugladar area, and there 
The advance of Russian occupiers is either hundreds of meters per day or even less, Kovalenko emphasized. He recalled that in three months of summer in the Pokrovsky direction, where the occupiers are conducting the most active military operations, the enemy troops advanced 21 kilometers, while they lost more than 1,000 personnel, not to mention a large amount of equipment. Here is a comparison. Yes, of course, the Russians will be able to advance in 2025, but at what pace, what areas will they be able to capture? And all this will concern both their offensive potential and, in the long term, defensive potential. This is what Mr. Budanov is talking about because he does not speak with emotions, but purely analytically, with conclusions that he receives from the state of the Russian military-industrial complex, as well as the ability of the Russian army to replenish its resources for the further implementation of plans and their plans are to capture the entire territory of Ukraine. Will they be able to do this? No. If even now they have difficulty advancing through rural areas and capturing villages non-stop, Kovalenko said.